So we're here to talk about Jerry Dwayne Gansky. All right, I have a few questions for you about my grandpa. Sure. All right, I was wondering, um, where was he, or did he draft, or was he enlisted, or was he, he drafted? He enlisted um, after graduating from high school in in Mankato at um, West High School it was then, and that was in 1959. Okay. Um, do you know where he was living at the time when he was, um, I guess when he enlisted, was that in Mankato? Or? Mm, yes, at his home with his parents, yeah. Okay. And which branch did he choose to join initially, and how many was he part of, I guess, in the end? Like, how many branches did he join? He, he joined the Air Force. Okay. Um, and as far as I know, he was sent to basic training in Texas. Okay. That's, that's as far as, that's what I know. I, um, I don't know how many weeks that is. And then, um. I believe um, it's eight weeks. That's what he told me, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, all right. Do you know what jobs or assignments he had while he was in the Air Force, or? Uh, well, he was in supplies, taking care of supplies, and I mean all supplies for the Air Force, for the planes. Okay, so he took maybe, he maybe took like inventory and helped load up the planes. That's for, exactly Okay, right. so probably mm -hmm. Vietnam, I, I assume. Well, it's, or, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, do you know how many years he was in the Air Force then? Well... Well, four years active. Okay, that four was, years active. So yeah. he was on the base like for four years, or he w and that. Well, at some point after Texas, he was uh, sent to Alaska, okay. and he was in Alaska for two years at Elmendorf Air Force Base. Okay. And there again, in supplies, in supplies. Although he went to school at night, I don't know what he what he took there, but maybe it was just. Uh, something of interest to him so because at that time Alaska was really probably quite remote yeah um, he used to say that there were fights and people would be thrown out of the bar <laughs> he used to say it was so cold that the ice would hang vertically in the air when he'd walk you know through the on the way to town and Anchorage was pretty much not as modernized as it is now. Okay. And um, for a part-time job, he worked at Jonas Brothers Furs and cleaned the floors at this furrier shop. Would that have been on the weekends? Well, it we... could have been on the base. Oh, okay. It could have been, or it could have been outside the base. Right. Yeah, like the weekends, yeah. You know, maybe like, what kind of job or what he did while he was in Alaska? Was it the same things he yeah. did before? Yeah, supplies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess when you two met, did how did he stay in touch with you? Or we met he... in Mankato. He came home on leave, and he was with his parents at a funeral. We met at a funeral, and it was our uncle, but we're not related. <laughs> We're we're not related, but okay. I was his uncle and my uncle, All right. and I was still in high school, so, and then he was um, home a few days. I probably went out with him once or twice, and then he had to report to uh, Chanute Air Force Base in Rantoul, Illinois. Okay, um, so, I guess when he's on leave, he probably just came home when he had. Right. Okay. He wasn't that well paid back okay. then in those days. They didn't earn big, you know, they didn't earn a lot of money yeah. in the 50s and the early 60s in the military. Okay. Um. All right. So when he was in the military, did he train to do anything else, like, say, be a medic or anything? Specific? Later on, when he joined the guards, many, you know, quite a few years later, when he, we were married, then he joined... The guards. He was in the army guard down in Mankato. Didn't care for it, and then went with uh, two or three other uh, 
airmen and went to the Air Force Guard at uh, Minneapolis St. Paul at Fleet. All right. How he handled that. He wanted to go back in the Air Force. It still was Air Force in his heart. He loved the Air Force. So. All right. And then um, when he was, I guess, a medic, do you know how long that would have been? or? Oh, quite a few years, you know, quite a few years. And then he'd go for two weeks uh, every summer with uh, his uh, group because he was in the air, like the air medevac. So he would, uh, in time of uh, stress of war or conflict or emergencies of any sort, he would be assisting the flight surgeon. Okay. And but then, then he still was also in charge then of medical supplies. All right. Was he, um, so did he like train others too or just? Oh, I actually did he gave hearing tests and took blood pressure some weekends. Okay. But he went once a month to air guard at the 133rd airlift wing of the Minnesota National Guard. Okay, so that was his unit then at that. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And um. And then I think he put the you know got the supplies organized the medical supplies. Um. Probably other planes too, but I think he always talked about the C one thirty Hercules cargo plane. All right. Did he ever? I guess did you ever get to visit him on base or even while he was? In well, the he went or? with me. I didn't marry him till sixty seven. So okay, because he took advantage of the GI Bill. Actually, he backing up. When he was in Alaska and he came home, then he went to college. And then one good Friday, he came running in the my parents' home and said there had been a huge earthquake in Alaska. And the school where he'd attended night school was gone, completely okay. demolished. And that was a terrible earthquake in Alaska. He used to say it would shake when he was up there, the ho the housing at night would shake, the, the rooms okay. would shake. So it wa that was a, a very bad earthquake. I think it's the second, second worst. Yeah, I think it's the second strongest. Yeah, yeah, the worst one is Chile, am I right? That's correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming that was 1964 that that happened. So he probably left Alaska a few years before that. Yeah, he would have, you know, yeah, yeah he would have been... But he, but it, it was very vivid in his mind. His, you know, the memories of that area of Alaska and all the destruction that happened there. So it really kind of shook him up. Okay, and um, you earlier you mentioned the GI Bill. I guess mm -hmm. I'm just curious, what did did he try to pursue a degree, and if so, what? Did well, he, he made use of the GI Bill here at at uh, MSU. Okay. Minnesota State University, Mankato, and um, yeah, he got a degree in um, elementary education then. Okay, and um, so did he teach a specific grade? Fifth grade, Okay, yeah. he taught fifth grade, and where did he teach? At Janesville, Minnesota. Okay, and then after he was, or while he was teaching, was he still active in the service? Well, not, not in the beginning, but then... He wanted to return to that. He knew there were good benefits, too, and he missed the camaraderie of his Air Force friends. And so he found people here in Mankato that were going up once a month, once a month. And I remember ironing the uniforms <laughs> and uh, the fatigue. And uh, then they would travel together. They'd take turns driving. and have their weekends and it worked it worked all right and then do you know um so did he just go back to the air force while he was teaching yeah or at the end okay so he, he just was returned. in the air guard for all, all of, right yeah weekend warriors they were okay yeah. and um so he taught in janesville and then mm -hmm. did he take any useful skills from the service that i guess he would use in everyday life or oh i'm tell? sure 
Like maybe organization? Organization, discipline. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe, I, yeah, manners. Just, I think the military is, has its, has its pluses, probably has its minuses too. <laughs> and um, did he seem to like the military as, a, if I remember, he used to talk about it all the time? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you believe it maybe made him a hard worker? Oh, that, sure. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he probably worked. Because it seems like he worked multiple jobs and mm-hmm. still pursued. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it worked too hard, probably. Right. Um, it was, and then he would take me to various bases when, in the summer when he wasn't teaching, we would go sometimes to uh, uh, K.I. I think it's K.I. Sawyer, is, but that is closed. Okay. Um, Texas, uh, Brooks is now not, is now part of Texas. It's not part of the air base anymore, but there's a lot of bases in Texas. And there's Ellington and Laughlin, Brooks, Shepard, Randolph, Goodfellow, Laughlin, just and more than that. And um, he was there one summer, and then I went down there, and we had a good time. And then we did um. One year we went on the way to Branson. We stopped at uh, Whiteman Air Force Base and stayed overnight. And that was interesting in um, Knob Noster, Missouri. That's the name. It's very hidden. It's, it, you wouldn't know it was there, that base. It's got a multitude of pine trees around it. I've been at Nellis Air Force Base. Um, an office. An office in Omaha. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I think that'll conclude our interview for today. Well, thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed getting some of this information.